Good morning everybody and welcome to today's student show tutorial. Um, today what we're going to be looking at is a question from a biology paper 2 in 2010. And, but before we do that I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors called Joseph's Books and Gallery and they're found at number 53 Soldier Road North in New Province. At Joseph's Bookstore you will find books and toys which make perfect sense for you and your needs. So please do go and have a look at um, Joseph's Bookstores. Um, okay, right, let's get to the question. Okay, like we said, this is a paper two, so this is a structured questions paper. Now, as you can see, what you've got in front of you here with this uh, this particular question is a schematic or picture of the human alimentary canal. And the first question it's asking you is, uh, what, uh, what, which structure does egestion happen at? Now, what you need to be looking at as well is to, with this, is to think what egestion means. It means the opposite of ingestion. So ingestion of food happens in the mouth, egestion happens at the anus. So which of those of those of, of, of those letters there is the anus? And the answer, of course, is letter T. Now then, the next one is to ask us, um, is to ask you, sorry, is where, in which structure does reabsorption of water happen? All right. So where does that happen in the human alimentary canal? And the answer there is going to be the large intestine or the colon. And that one there. And the answer to that one then is R. And there we are. Now, deamination takes place where? Now, this is one of those words. It's if you if you're looking at this question now and uh, you're not sure what deamination is, you need to go and look it up. Now, deamination happens in the liver. So what's being asked for you here to look at to to work out is which one of these structures is the liver? And the answer there, of course, is U. So there we are. Right then. Okay. So you're being asked here in B1 to name name the substance stored in structure V. Now a big mistake, but in fact probably the most common mistake that happens with these sorts of diagrams is the students don't look enough and don't pay enough attention to what the diagram is, what 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 the arrow is pointing at, what the line is pointing at. You need to make sure that when you look at V, you follow the line all the way to the end. You can see what it's pointing at. Now you look at V, it's not pointing at the liver, it's pointing at something else. That structure there you can see is called the gallbladder. Now what substance is stored in the gallbladder? The answer, of course, is bile. Bile. Just like that. There we go. That's it. That's all you need to say. Now, name one function of, of, of this substance. Now there are several you can pick, but the most common one, the, the answer that they're really looking for, the, the most common answer, is that it emulsifies and breaks up fats. Um, now the bile is, is stored in the gallbladder and gets released in, into in, into the uh, into the small intestine, into the duodenum, and uh, the, the fats are broken down. Okay, so you need to have a look at that if you're not sure what uh, what goes on with that particular part of digestion. You need to go and have a look and see what the function of bile is in terms of the in, in terms of human digestion. You should come across words like lipase enzymes. And you should come across words like emulsifying and, uh, and, and surface area and words like that. Okay, 7C. Give one way in which the structure of the large intestine differs from the small intestine. Okay, now there are several answers you can pick here. I mean, I, I wrote down two. I wrote down that the large intestine has a wider diameter and it contains no billy. Okay, so that's, so that's the first part of the question. The last part of the question is is here, and it's really it's asking you here. It says here, amino acids and glucose are carried into the bloodstream from the small intestine to the liver. Describe the processes which occur in the liver when there is an excess excess of these materials in the blood. So, what happens to any excess amino acids? Now, of course, the, the any excess amino acids, the body can't store them. They're actually quite toxic for the body, and they can actually cause you know, in certain cases, they can cause do a lot of damage to you. Um, they need to be broken down and gotten rid of, or excreted, broken down, converted in the liver before they are excreted. But for here, the amino acids are broken down and converted to glycogen. Okay, last question: glucose. What happens to any excess molecules of glucose? Well, they are transported to the liver as well, and what happens to them is they are converted to glycogen. And what glycogen is is a long chain carbohydrate which acts as a source of glucose molecules. Now you should know this already or should be aware of this through things through looking at 
work of what, what insulin does, how the hormones work, how the hormone insulin works, and how the other hormone glucagon works as well. Um, and you should, that probably in your notes, that should be in your notes under homeostasis. So what you're looking at here is a good example of um, how the body uh, maintains homeostasis. So the glucose is converted to glycogen and stored into the, and stored in the liver. When glucose levels begin to drop in the body, the glycogen is broken down and, and glucose molecules are released into bloodstream. Okay, and that is it. Now that, that is the answers for, for these questions here. Um, and that's basically it. All right, so um, once again, please feel free to go and have a look at our sponsor's bookstore, and um, I will see you again soon. Thank you very much for listening. Bye now.